Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Toolkit RC M8D charger. It's a, a charger with a screen that tilts around. It's also a touch screen, but if you don't want to touch it, we do have still buttons on the side. But the most important thing I have to tell you is probably something our veterans probably already know just from looking at the specifications. It does not come with an internal power supply. You can't buy this, bring it home, plug it into the wall. It comes to supply power with an XT90 connection. Uh, typically, this end has nothing on it, but I've put an XT60 on here uh, so that I can use my uh, Toolkit RC power adapter. So I'm going to be using this to show you how this operates. And it does have some interesting and fun features that you might enjoy for, I think it retails for $139.99. As far as the other specifications, they're printed right on the box, which is right here. Oh, catfish. And through the magic of editing, I have it right here on the screen. So of course, we have the model name right down here. Uh, input, this is important part. Uh, 10 to 49 volts, max 60 amps. Of course, we've got that XT90 connector on this guy to supply all that power. Of course, the more power you supply it, the more likely you will be able to achieve the fastest possible charging for the batteries that they have listed there that go from 1 to 8S, and for the nickel metal hydride, 1 to 20S, and for the PBE batteries, 1 to 15S. Of course, it has charge, discharge. They don't have mentioned here, but it also has destroy. Uh, the LCD screen is an IPS display. It is a capacitive touch at 3.5 inches, and the results, or the resolution, sorry, resolution, excuse me, resolution, 480 by 320. As I mentioned previously, capacitive. It does have a USB-C port, as listed right up here, with the max 65 watt. Uh, it's not in a terrible handy place, the USB-C port. It's kind of in the back, right here. But at least we do have it. So let's turn it on. I'm gonna plug it in. It's gonna be important to listen up. So hopefully you can hear this thing start up as it is powered on. We got a couple of lights and a pretty loud fan. With the overall boot process, I'm having a difficult time talking tonight. Uh, it comes up relatively quickly. Of course, on the front, we have our two XT60 connections and our battery, again, with the talking. Balance lead connectors uh, here up front. I'm going to get me a couple little adapters because I'm a micro guy. And I'm going to charge a couple little micro batteries that have XT30 connections. Okay, I've got it powered on finally. I had to go through some stuff and reset it kind of back to factory defaults in order for you to hear it. So I'm going to plug in a battery. We're going to get a little announcement here. A light up front. Battery connected. Kind of loud. Not a fan of the tone of the voice as someone flushes the toilet upstairs. Uh, connect the battery again. Battery connected. So it's kind of fun. This, a lot of this, especially the interface, reminds me of some sort of HUD display that we might see in a video game. Reminds me a little bit about FPV with our Betaflight statistical information on the screen as well. You know, you can put crosshairs up there. You can put uh, the stick overlays. Kind of that, that geeky sort of stuff. This, this charger and the interface of this charger kind of speaks to me in that regards. But uh, let's go in here uh, so you can see the settings. Notice as I scroll that it doesn't scroll smooth like your cell phones. It doesn't have that high refresh rate that makes for things really, really smooth. But you can see it, it kind of, you get some lines around here, but we have our different listings here. I'm not going to read those all off to you. Hopefully you're watching the video so that you can see everything that's on the interface. Uh, we got some temperature stuff there, the charge settings, synchronous mode, continuous work mode. That's a nice feature so that when a battery's done, you can plug in the next battery and do the same thing. Say you're storage charging, uh, you can just go through the batteries and it'll continue to do storage charging. You would turn that one on over there. Pretty much the only one I want to really call out necessarily. Uh, here we've got the backlighting so we can Scroll that down with the touch screen. Uh, the operation volume, I've got it set currently to high. Uh, it has a couple different settings, off, low, and medium as well. Uh, the announce volume, same settings available. Uh, 10 different languages. So for our friends that don't speak English, hey, got several there. Uh, hopefully you can see these, Portuguese, Spanish, Chinese, uh, Mandarin maybe, I don't know. I don't, I can't read these. I can only read English, sorry. And then we've got the dark. And yeah, come on, register, and then the light. Uh, I'm going back to, whoops, I moved to setting. I'm going back to dark mode. I like dark mode. I use dark mode for work. So that's what we're going to go. Let's see, what's F? What's left? Uh, we've got our log file. It can keep log files for our different batteries. Uh, you can calibrate the channels. And then down here, we get our ID 
and then we have our save button. It's overlaid here. These are not actual buttons. These just relate to these buttons over here. So don't get confused by that. You can use these buttons instead of the touch interface if you want to. So let's say, let's go up here to our charge. Uh, let's see, max power. We'll just leave all this stuff. Let's go back. And we got two batteries charged or plugged in. So I'm gonna go into one battery. And then uh, let's see. Uh, so I'm going to currently charge there, but I'm going to modify so I could drag this up, drag this back down. And then when it gets a little bit tedious, you can try to drag it. See, I always have problems when it gets down here right at the end, and that's where I have to use the scroll wheel. Click it. So let's just go there. Uh, mode is charge, of course. When we go up here to charge, we can do discharge, store charge, and the pre or aforementioned destroy. Uh, we're going to do charge because I do need to fly these batteries tomorrow. I, I use auto. Oh, the in voltage. I got to change that, of course. Uh, I use auto to auto detect on pretty much all the chargers I use. With my chargers of this, charging of this, I haven't found that it misdetected any of my batteries or through a fit. Of course, right now I don't have the battery leads plugged in, but I will do that shortly. So I need to go here. I can't be charging these batteries that high. I'd have a fire on my hands, wouldn't I? So we'll go to 420. I'm going to plug the balance leads in, and then we'll see the interface as it's working to charge. Oops, this one's plugged in wrong. I gotta move that over. And then we're gonna confirm. Charge and start. Come on, fingers. Charging starts. And we get that little tone, so we're gonna go into the other channel. And we're just gonna start it because it's put 0.8 already and 4.2, the same settings that I previously had. And you can change the, the uh, channel over here, I believe. Yeah, there we go. This bottom row, this is where I have troubles. There, got it. There we go. Charging starts. So, charging starts. Mm, the English might not be great on this. So, when you're switching languages, I don't know how it sounds like because I don't know what it would say. I don't know how to interpret that for you. But, uh, you know, the, the lights on the front, the interface, the fact that this uh, can be moved around. I like that because I charge uh, directly behind me. You may have see, seen this in a previous video or two if you were eagle-eyed. Uh, you can get into some info here. It gives you the uh, voltage that each cell is at. You can have that up on each one. Uh, you don't have to touch the info button. So if I make that go away, if I just touch up here... It also brings up that info button. It gives us our status of the fan. That would, of course, be for the internal fan for keeping things cool. Uh, normally, when you're discharging or charging at a high rate, that fan might kick on. Uh, and then we've got our uh, save button there for that log file that it can create. So you, if you were to be into that, uh, you could keep track of your charging and what other tasks you might be st storage charging, regular charging, destroying your batteries, uh, it would keep a log file for you and you can investigate that. Not something I am particularly interested in, but you know, I've been around doing this a long time. So that might be a new feature that newer pilots are more interested in from other charging experiences they've had. So when I say geeky or nerdy or techie, um, I think of that as a term of affection. This is a Father's Day gift from probably more than a decade ago that my wife got me because yeah, I'm kind of a geek. But I built a career on that that's helped feed the family. So I don't have any problems with being geeky or techy or nerdy. Uh, wear it as a badge of courage and honor and what have you. But as far as this charger goes, yeah, it's a little bit geeky. But it speaks to me now. Is that your sort of thing? Is this something that you want to have sitting on your charger or taking to the field? Keep in mind, it does not come with a power supply. You have got to purchase a power supply separately. Uh, oftentimes what is very popular and economical is you can buy a server power supply from our FPV shops that has been wired. I think they usually wire those with an XT60 connector. 
So you have this one available if you were to pursue that uh, in order to put your own XT60 on here. Uh, of course, you could do something like I have with uh, the Toolkit RC. Uh, this, the model on this is the MDF100. If you're interested in using that, I've had this around for a while. I've used this for a different charger that's sitting right up over there. But yeah, I, uh, I like the interface. I like the fact that it has the continuous work mode and it has various feature sets. The sound packs I'm especially interested in. Is that something that we can change? Can we somehow plug into the USB and upload a sound pack? I don't know. Um, I haven't really investigated that a lot because I don't know. I'm not very creative when it comes to those sorts of things, but many of you are. Maybe you have a Bardwell sound pack. You, you capture snippets from his videos and you make uh, a Bardwell sound pack. Or you have an Arnold Schwarzenegger or some other celebrity with an interesting voice. Um, or maybe you take the Amber sound pack from FR Sky and uh, repurpose it for this. I don't know if we can do that, but wouldn't that be fun and interesting uh, to make this a next level geeky or techie sort of uh, charger. It's not too often our chargers are very exciting. But in this case, the interface and that sound pack would be something that I'm pretty interested in. So uh, if you know, and I'll ask after this video is published, I try to keep my communication with the manufacturers pretty minimal. I'll ask about the sound pack to see if maybe that's a possibility or a feature they can bring to their next charger if this one can't house a different sound pack uh, natively. But if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise on the Toolkit RC, M8D, touch screen, tilt screen, XT90 powered charger, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.